Hello, everyone. Thank you for invitation introduction. Um, my name is Song Spark, and definitely I came from the South Korea. As I know, I'm the only Asian presenter in this conference, so it's my really honor. And thank you for being here. I didn't expect many people came here because it's early morning, and some nice Google guy is uh, present something on another track, so I didn't expect. But Thank you for being here. I'm, I will present about a specific APT group called the Lazarus. I think you already heard about uh, this group. And last year, they focus on the fine, they keep attacking the financial institute in South Korea and around the world. So I will talk about how they attack the, especially the cryptocurrency agency and how they configure their C2 infrastructure. Before moving on, my, my name is Song Su Park. I'm South Korean and I'm working in the Kaspersky lab great as senior security researcher. And I usually focus on the APEC region, cyber threat and threat intelligence and cyber threat hunting. And I've been working as the Mario researcher and instance response almost 10 years. And I love the Mario researching instance response threat intelligence. And Anybody know about the, our team? Great. I, I, I think many people already know. Yesterday, our director, Kostin Layu, is a keynote. So I just uh, introduced our team briefly. We are global research and analysis team. We spread uh, all around the world, and I'm belong to the APEC region. And we, in APEC region, we have a uh, 60 members, so we cover the whole APT attack in APEC region. And we did the uh, APT attack researching and critical infrastructure threat and banking threat and some kind of sophisticated target attack. We found it uh, on 2008. Uh, our uh, CEO using Kaspersky is ordered to make uh, this kind of team and he is a keynote speaker, Kostin Layu. Yeah. And you already saw this, uh, this slide yesterday, but at the Costin's slide, his slide does not include the 2017 case, but I add the 2017 case. You, last year is very, oh, I'm sorry. Last year it's a very, very busy year for me because uh, you can see Blue Norof, we published about the Blue Norof. This group is behind the Bangladesh banking heist. They steal the 81 million US dollar from the Bangladesh bank. And they also attack the whole many, many banks around the world. For example, the Polish bank. And they also attacked some casino in Latin America. And they also attacked some cryptocurrency exchange last year. So we, and they are still activate, very activate group, Blue Norof. And the other thing is interesting is the shadow pad. Mm, Kostin is uh, introduced about this group yesterday. When they doing some uh, supply chain attack last year. They compromised the one South Korea software vendor. They named the Nesara. And so I contact them to mitigate their compri compromise months. So they are very sophisticated group. And so last year is a very interesting year for me. And in this presentation, I will show, focus on just this group, Lazarus. And anyone heard about the Lazarus group? Yes, many people already know about that. But this very infamous group, very notorious APT group. And many, not only the security vendor, but many governments around the world is focused on this group. It's very notorious APT group. Definitely, they are the state-sponsored APT group. They have a well resource, and they keep attacking some group. And they, I think, they have many another team member and big groups. And at the first time, they usually focus on the cyber espionage and the cyber sabotage. But recently, their main intention is the financial profit. And we divide this group at the several groups. They are big entity. Lazarus is a very big entity, and we try to divide that group to another several subgroup. The first one is Andariel. Andariel is um, one of the subgroup of Lazarus. They keep 
they just focus on the South Korea. Last year, they attacked the South Korea Ministry of National Defense. And after that attack, they attacking the South Korea auto teller machine. They compromised some ATM and steal some money. It's interesting. At first time, they attacked the military. And next, they attacked the ATM. So they steal some military intelligence. Not only the military intelligence, they steal money and intelligence. So, and they are very well known about the South Korea uh, IT environment. They usually using the um, South Korea software vulnerabilities, just using in South Korea. So they are very special group for South Korea. And the Blue North is um, the group, sub -group, this subgroup is behind the Bangladesh bank heist. So they only focus on to steal some money from the financial institute around the world. The famous attack case is uh, 2013 Itak Seoul attack. Maybe somebody already heard about that. At that time, the Lazars were wiping out the uh, media and the bank host in South Korea. So, as I remember, more than 3,000 hosts are wiping out this is in this attack. So, it's very huge cyber attack in South Korea. And after that, 2014, the Sony Pictures Entertainment is uh, breached. They still some. Uh, information from Sony Pictures Entertainment, and they are also wiping out so many hosts in the Sony Pictures. And I think at, at, from this time, the many security vendors had a focus on the, the Lazarus group because it's a huge incident. And after that, uh, Blue North is attacked by Bangladesh Bank. And last year, it's a famous one, it's a WannaCry outbreak. So it's very famous, one of the famous group. Uh, we keep tracking uh, this group, Lazarus. So this is the, our threat intelligence report published the last year. And you can see that we described the, this Maria framework and they keep attacking the electronic cryptocurrency agency operator and they hit the casino last year and they are definitely Korean speaking actor. So at every through the intelligent report, you can see the Maria name, the manuscript. We call this Maria as manuscript. As I know, another vendor is called it another name. For example, the asset is called this Maria, maybe nuke speed. And US assert is called another name, the bank shot, where the day before yesterday published a type of frame, something like that. So, but we called this Maria family as a manuscript. So, in this presentation, I will focus on this Morio framework. So what is the manuscript? It's the, they starting using the manuscript Morio around the 2013. It's five years. And they still use it, this Morio families very actively. And this Morio is many overlap with the old largest code style. You know, somebody know about the Operation Blockbuster huge report, white paper. At we, when we compare the manuscript and the Operation Blockbuster malware, there is many code overlap and the CNC infrastructure. And at the first time, they using this Morio family to attack the national intelligence, but recently, they using the this Morio family to attack the financial sector. This is early stage of manuscript. At the first time, they start to using this in 2013, and they have. A, they using the many kind of decoy type, word, word document and PDF document. And you can see that at the first one is the reunion invitation decoy document. And the, the, the sender is this guy says the University of South, Southern California. And second one is a, some invitation to seminar, but uh, the sender is the Korean military, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And third one is the same draft agenda. And then last one is, uh, uh, this guy says, uh, sent from strategy division, United States of Force Korea, United States, US Army. So at early stage, they using the, this Maria framework to steal some military intelligence or government intelligence. But now they using the, this Maria family usually attack the cryptocurrency agency. And from now on, let's see the attack case in South Korea. You know, last year is a 
everybody is crazy about the cryptocurrency. I, I hope nobody is losing your money in this room. But it's the same in South Korea. Many people invest their money to cryptocurrency. Some housewife made some money and invest their money. So, and South Korea has the many big, huge the cryptocurrency exchange. I think last year the rank is changed, but we have a huge, so many cryptocurrency exchange in South Korea. So you can see the many news from the media. There are so many cyber attack aimed at the South Korea crypto exchange. For example, this CNN news is a talk about the UBIT. It's a South Korean crypto exchange. And UBIT is a bankrupt last year because of cyber attack. But I'm not sure the Lazarus is related to this bankrupt, but anyway, this, this exchange is bankrupt last year. And this news and this news is a talk about uh, another Bitcoin exchange called the b i s n a m They attacking from last year and some law enforcement and the media said uh, North Korea is behind uh, this attack. Because, um, so some people said, uh, Lazarus attacked the b i s a m keep attacking. And last, maybe last week, another cryptocurrency exchange named the CoinRail is breached. They lost their money, so, uh, US $40 million last week. And it means that they still attacking the South Korea exchange from the last year and until very recently. And this is infection vector, how they attack the cryptocurrency exchange. It's the coming from the law enforcement announcement and our own investigation. There is a three initial infection vectors. The first one is a malicious HWP file. I know you are not familiar with the HWP file. I will talk about this one later. And uh, they also using the malicious office file, weaponized in, uh, Word document. And they also using the malicious APK file. They try to infect the Operate an Android machine, and I, I'm not sure what they did to infect the Android machine, but they, anyway, they're using the malicious APK file. So, in this uh, attack case, I will focus on the malicious HWP file case. The HWP file format is a stand for the Hangul Word Processor. Hangul Word Processor is a word processing application developed by a South Korea company named Hangul. And it's a word processing program, but usually using the government agency and the government office in South Korea by law. I can understand, but uh, it's a national software activation policy in South Korea. So government agency and office have to use in the, this word processor. It means that it's very good attack vector for the threat actor. So they usually focus on the, this file format to attack the South Korea. And you can see that it has a very similar structure with the op open office or word processor. It has many streams and binary data. You can see the document info. It also supports the JavaScript and it has a each sections and it has a file header. But we will focus on this section. That PS, it stands for the postscript. This uh, HWP file also supports the postscript. The postscript is a um, Uh, at the first time, this is using for the printing or document uh, imaging. But uh, this postscript also supports the full features. So, for example, using by this postscript, you can call the window API. So you can do anything by this postscript. So, so the ladders recently they usually using the just postscript to impact the potential victim. So I analyzed that uh, maybe almost uh, more than 50 5.0 sample, HWP, malicious HWP sample. And as first one, I uh, categorized the decoy document. And first one, they usually using the resume to send their manuscript payload. The resume, contents of the resume is mainly financial related person. And some decoy document, Include the victim company's name. So, 
For example, I will apply your company name to blah, blah. So it's easily to know they attacked which cryptocurrency agency. And they also using the cryptocurrency contents, the cryptocurrency related news or contents and cryptocurrency market expectations. And last one is that they also using the legal issue to threat the receiver. And so they send some low sheet or audit and form about the legal issue to make some people is executed this malware. It's a whole real attack, HWP file samples. And I extracted the whole metadata from the HWP file. It also has the order name and the last saved by specific username. So I extracted the just the metadata, order name and the less stable username, and it has many connections. So you can see the yellow one is the less stable username, and blue one is the older name, and red point is malicious HWP file. You can see the many connection is overlap. And in this case, the threat actor usually using the this username, Alosha, Alosha. I, I don't know what, is, what it means, but it's not a South Korean. So Alosha, and they also using the default username administrator. So we strongly believe that one threat actor has made this whole malicious HWP samples. And from now on, I will uh, show each the PostScript type, how they change their strategy, how they change their PostScript type. At first one, I analyzed the 50 sample and categorize it as the sixth type of PostScript. At the first one, they starting using the very simple things. It's, very, it's a real post type. It has a ask hex type payload at the end of the post script. It's very simple. Just a, you can see the 45A is MG header. You can see that this is the exact exact window P file. And just uh, read this one and uh, drop that file at this path window startup folder. It's very very simple. Just drop in and uh, drop the manuscript payload and execute it. At the early stage, they're using the, this kind of post script, but you know it's, it's very easy to detect it because post script has uh, some ask hex time executable. So they, after a few months later, they change their strategy. And this post script does not using the vulnerabilities. It's a function of the post script, so it's very easy to use it. But from the type two, they starting using the vulnerability of the post script. So you can see that they, at the first type two, they starting using specific uh, four byte XOR key. And this one, then they starting using some strange Chinese variable name. I, I'm, I'm not sure what it means, Yaoshi, Ima, Inji, this kind of a Chinese name. And they're using the, this four byte key and decrypt this encrypted post script and the shell code. It's EMA and just uh, using decrypted this EMA variable using the, this kind of four byte XOR key. So after, when you, when I decrypt uh, this uh, encrypted post script and shell code, you can see that this it include the shell code and the uh, post script, an additional post script. This post script is uh, used for triggering the vulnerabilities and decrypt data contents, the exploit code and shell code. It's a, this routine is using for the heap spray, and you can see HGS DLS32 is the uh, PostScript handling module. So they're using the, this module's vulnerability and making some ROP gazette and triggering the exploits. So this is type two of the uh, PostScript. When, if this exploit is uh, working well, the shellcode just, shellcode just uh, decrypts the embedded manuscript, depend on the Windows version, 32 bits and the 64 bits, and inject this manuscript to the legitimate process, explorer.exe, and execute it. So this, okay, and on the next, they change their strategy. They Chain, I categorize it just as three and four, and they remove the decryption process. 
you know, I said that at the type 2, they're using the 4 byte XOR key and uh, decrypt the real shellcode and post script. But from this type, they just uh, remove the decryption process and um, they elaborate the exploit code for executing it reliably. And it's the same structure, but just the postscript execute is a real shellcode. And this shellcode is just a decrypt, encrypted manuscript depend on the Windows version. So they slightly change their postscript for executed very reliably. And, and I categorize it, it three and four because they, when they decrypt the encrypted manuscript, they're using the another techniques. From uh, at the type three, they using the four byte XOR decryption, but from the type four, they start using the AES decryption. So they change their strategy. And type five, they add one line, one more function to evade may, maybe detection, to evade detection. This is a XOR routine. Just a, this routine is just the XOR this shell code, decrypt just shell code. So it means that they add some DF, uh, decryption routine at the type five, just to add a one byte XOR key. And, you know, until now, the whole postscript has the embedded manuscript payload. It means that it, its size is too big to just to for the document file. But so they changed it from the type six and until now, they using the, this kind of a postscript. They, the sh function of the shellcode is very simple. It has the same postscript to trigger the vulnerability and, uh, but the no more embedded payload, embedded manuscript malware. The shellcode is just to download malware from the remote service, remote server, sorry. So, until recently they using the, this strategy. So let's, I know it's a very, Complicated, but let's uh, summarize that. At the type one, they drop the embedded ASCX type payload. At the type two, they start using the postscript vulnerability and decrypt the shellcode and exploit postscript using the four byte XOR key and decrypt the payload with the four byte XOR key. And from the type three, they remove the shellcode postscript decryption routine and they polishing their postscript, and until type three, when they decrypt the payload, they using the four byte XOR key. But from the type four, they start using the AES algorithm to decrypt the payload. And type four, they add the shellcode encryption post one byte decryption routine to decrypt the real shellcode. And type six, they change their shellcode type to download the real manuscript from the remote server. So it's a uh, early of last year and recently they keep changing their strategy to deliver the manuscript payload to the potential victim. This is structure. I just summarized that you can see the type two and three, four and five is very similar structure. And type one is early stage, very different type. It, it doesn't use any vulnerabilities, but you can see that they change their strategy from the type two and they keep changing slightly. And at the type five, they just using the one byte XOR decryption routine. And from the type six, they start to remove the embedded payload and they start to download the real manuscript from the remote server. So I think they are very diligent. They are very, well, keep working to polishing their uh, attack mechanism. Vector. And let me see the each type uh, divide by the functions. For example, shellcode decryption routine, just the type two using the four byte X well, and type five and six add some one byte X well decryption routine. And the shellcode triggering is J using the same same vulnerabilities. I don't know why, why people does not patch, but the government people does not want to patch. So it's all, it's not a new vulnerability, it's not a zero day. As I heard, uh, uh, Hangul software adds some security module to prevent some, for example, some ROP gadget where their memory protection 
So it's not easy to find uh, some uh, zero day from the Hangul file. So they keep using the old vulnerability, but they success. They keep attacking. And payload decryption, at the first time, they using the four byte text well, but they change it to AES decryption. More complicated one. And the uh, shell code type is, uh, until the type five, they embedded it. Uh, they decrypt embedded payload and inject that payload to the normal process. But uh, from the type six, they start to download it from the remote server. Okay, let's think about this uh, change from the attacker side and defender side. At the first time, I uh, this hunger sample is started from the April of last year, and until recently, the type one they just dropped the ASCII type. It's very easy to at the easy to defend at the. For example, the antivirus researcher, it's very easy. Just to detect the embedded ASCII type post the script. So they start to change their strategy. They start to using the exploit and the XWAL, the shell code, and the exploit triggering, triggering script. But the uh, XWAL, you know, the post script is using the XWAL key and the decrypt one. It's a really suspicious one. Post script, why post script using the decryption routine? So, they start to detect this routine, so they change it. They remove their detection routine, and they polish their exploit code. And they, they also change their uh, payload decryption routine from the XWAR to the AES. So they start to detect embedded shellcode at the postscript, so the attacker adds the one byte XWAR decryption routine. So, and at the AB company, just to start to detect uh, embedded huge size of encrypted payload. It's very suspicious. Postscript is using for the imaging or printing, but it has a huge binary data. It could be uh, some suspicious one. So they start to detect embedded encrypted payload, so they start to download it from the remote server. So it's very cat and mouse game of attacker and defender. It's just my private opinion, but when I analyze that this whole post script type, it is interestingly is keep changing like this one. Add some defender, add some features, and the attacker change their strategy. So it's very interesting for me. But after this post script, it has a shell code type. I categorize the whole post script as six type, but it has the same shell code. It means the same thread actor is using the, this post script. It has uh, almost the same basic block. A similarity is very high. And when the shell code is process searching, it using the same type. It's maybe it's type two shell code. It's type five or six shell code. So it's using the same shell code. When and the, if if the shell code want to get handled, it also using the same shell code. The shellcode is very simple. At the first time, the shellcode is find the decryption key from the. They try to search AABBCCDD marker and read the decryption key and get API address by the hash and get handle using the window API anti duplicate object API and just decrypt the real payload, real manuscripts. This case is using the XOR, but after they changed to AES algorithm, and finally they inject the, this manuscript to the explore.exe process. That's the whole feature of the shellcode. It's the same, whole, whole post script type has the same shellcode. And payload is a, also, as I mentioned, is a manuscript, but it's a two type of manuscript. The first type is IP-based science communication type. It uh, only using the up to type two post script. It's an old one, but not seen after the November last year, November, and it include the fake SSL com communications. If you have an interest about larger tools, it's uh, definitely one of the characteristics of larger tools. They embedded the whole normal. Uh, domain name, and when they start to SSL communication, they using the this uh, 
domain name to making some encryption channel, but they does not using the SSL encryption when they really send some data and receive. They just using the fake SSL communication. And feature is just a full feature backdoor. They can handling file and process, execute command, or send some data to C2 server. And the other type is the HTTP-based CNC communications. They usually using the, this type of manuscript and using the compromised server in South Korea and sometimes in China. And they using the, their, they upload their own uh, CNC script to the compromised server. And this manuscript also has a full feature backdoor. It can control the whole thing since the impact to the host. And at the CNC infrastructure introduction, I will focus on the, this kind of manuscript. And as I say, I analyzed the 50 sample, when, but the type of CNC server is just a three type. So first one is a compromised server. The Lazarus is a compromised server all around the world, and it's a direct connect to the IP address. It does not use the domain name. And they start to using the encrypted channel, as I mentioned, the fake SSL channel. And the other type is the, they compromise the web server in South Korea, just in South Korea. They usually compromise the IIS server and they upload their own JSP uh, script to the compromise server. And they, maybe they using the specific board vulnerability. It's a South Korea board. This one is also using, only using in South Korea. And they also using the word process vulnerability. And, you know, we, I working closely with the law enforcement in South Korea. So when I found that this kind of compromise server, I just send the information to law enforcement. So it's easy to uh, react so fast because it, it's, this server is in South Korea. So law enforcement just contact the administrator and remove this script. It's very easy. So recently they started using the server in China. It's not easy to react fast in China. You know, the China policy is not, and I don't know, but <laughs> they started using the compromised AI server in China. So they unload their PHP script and these two of the Website using the same CMS. I see the dead CMS, maybe it's a China CMS. And they also using the word process vulnerabilities. So they using the three type of CN server and I will show the CN server configuration about this kind of C2 server. And they does not only using the HTTP file, they using the word process file. You can see that this is word process file attack the South Korea exchange. And they using the macro file, and I will show this one later. And this is one of the cases that how they persistent attack the one B team. I saw this case from the multi AV scanner service. You know the virus total. They uh, this is a HWP file. Is this a Windows Word file? But it has the same file name: Bitcoin wallet address and uh, transaction number. But it has the same decoy document, but one is the uh, malicious HWP and the other is the malicious word file. It unloaded from the same source from the South Korea. I, I think it's the big team, potential big team. But they unload this one at the same day, the same file name, and from the same source. And after four days later, another malicious file, Bitcoin transaction history dot Excel file, is unloaded from the same source. It means that they keep attacking the one big team in South Korea. At the first time, they send the malicious HWP file, and next they send the word file, and they send the malicious Excel file. They keep attacking the one big team, just using the same strategy. And let let me see the another country's case. They just not fo they just usually focus on South Korea, but they also attack on another countries all around the world. And at that at this time, they using the spear phishing case on that same spear phishing case, and they 
you know, you guys that does not using the HWP, you don't, so they using the malicious OPC document, and it's, it's not has on some vulnerability, they using the mm, macro embedded malicious word file. And this macro is a, uh, really obfuscated, but it's very simple. It has just two functions. One macro is just create a payload. This payload is um, very similar with the manuscript. We call it virtual, but it's a manuscript type. And the other macro is to create a real decoy document and to deceive the user. And then who is target? I, I categorize that. I just suspect, uh, based on the contents of the decoy document, I try to figure out who is the, uh, target. At first time, they usually using the finance related decoy document. You can see that this is Citibank in Mexico, and this is a BBVA bank name, and this doc decoy document is a, uh, HABC in United Kingdom, and this decoy document is also HABC insurance in Hong Kong. So they usually using the, this kind of decoy document. And the other is a, a, some kind of contents of engineering. First one is, um, Blizzard Entertainment Project Manager, eSports Blizzard uh, Project Manager. The other is, um, I, as I, from the Googling, it's a Polish city name. I, I, I don't know, how can I express this? What, what is so, what show? Thank you. And they're using the, some CIB operation, project manager for this operation center. And last thing is that they also using the cryptocurrency decoy. It's a, a investigation, investment proposal from some fintech company. And this one is a real a cryptocurrency exchange name, Luno. Uh, I forgot the, which countries. And this one is a Coinbase real cryptocurrency exchange name. And they're using the, this kind of decoy document. And it has a, this malicious macro embedded word file has the same payload. This pay, payload also is a full featured backdoor, also known as the full chill. Many vendors call this one as full chill. And research cert is also called a fortune. This is IP based communication. It also using the fake SSL communications and it using the compromised server. They, the larger already compromised many servers and using the, this, uh, payload to steal some data. And they also using the HTTP based DC2 communication. It's the same, the South Korean other case and uh, another country's other case. And it's a full featured backdoor. It can be the, uh, fi handling the file or process or collect some system information is a full featured backdoor. Then let's see the CNC server configuration, how they, uh, configure the C2 server. So I don't have many time, so let's move in quickly. I, I started this invocation from the one malicious HWP file. I found the one CNC server from the South Korea, so I share this information to the investigation agency in South Korea, and they uh, look up they, their compromise server and found one proxy module. And next hope is uh, in France, so it's not easy to more investigation, so they just share this proxy module to me, so, and I did uh, some Yara magic. I made a Yara rule and uh, keep to expanding my research from our telemetry, and I found many compromise server around the world and uh, how they configure their C2 server. So at the conclusion, they using the multi-stage proxy server. They uh, configure the many compromise server, and uh, when the manuscript start to connect the first hop, this hop is just forward the traffic another hop, and finally the traffic is go to the final stage of C2 server. They configure their whole C2 server like this one, and when I extracted the whole, they I made this map using our telemetry, they attack the C2 server around the world. They just not focus on the one region or one, one continental. They attack many, many server in South Korea, USA, Europe region. And 
I found many tools from the C2 server. They using the backdoor variant. They also using the active backdoor and passive style backdoor and the HTTP backdoor. It's the same manuscript when they attack the crypt cryptocurrency agency. They're using the dead tools when they configure to C2 server. It's the same full featured backdoor. And the other is the proxy malware. They configure their multi-stage proxy server. So they're using the, the main component of that server is the proxy module. And they're also using the information harvester. They extract a TCP connection from the inbound and outbound connection. And if they, if they conclude that host is a valuable, they start to compromise the corporate network. I saw that one case at uh, Latin America. So they start to gather some information at the uh, uh, compromise server. And the other tool is that they also using some wiper to erase their evidence or specific files securely. And important thing is the proxy module. It's, a, it's just a simply for the incoming traffic to the next hub. They configure the multi-stage proxy module. They store the configuration at the specific registry key. Uh, after this speaking, I will publish this presentation on on the internet. So uh, just to quickly move. They save the configuration as a specific file, tcpbeep.ime, and they keep attacking this configuration file from the another hub. And they also add all of the port list using the Windows command. They're using the national command and add to the all of the list to proxy module. And the fake, they also using the same fake SSL communication. It's a definitely one of the big characteristics of Lazarus module. They keep using the, this fake SSL communication. I heard from, I saw the t Twitter last, last day, some Polish researcher Publish about the, this one, fake SSL communication. So you can find it. And I found another interesting proxy module. They keep changing their strategies. And the, this one is uh, rarely used, uh, this module. And this, this is uh, very interesting. This P2P proxy has the, called this C2 server as a global P2P. Maybe it's, it's a passive backdoor in, uh, module to install this uh, global P2P. And this infected P2P proxy infected host has a two thread. One thread is uh, receive data from the global P2P, receive data and uh, write it to the listened named pipe. It just communicate using the named pipe. And thread two is a lead data from the external named pipe and send it to the global P2P server. It means that they want to communicate it internal infected host and send the data just uh, one channel to the internet internet host. I think they can use this kind of a proxy at the two type. The one is the isolate network. You know, the iso it, at the isolate network, just a few hosts can connect to the internet. So they using the P2, this kind of P2P proxy, just this host, if this host can connect to the internet, they just implant that host at, at here. And the other case is that if they want to compromise the whole ISP for one ISP, they start using um, one just one host is uh, try to uh, receive some configuration from the external host, and they using just using the named pipe and communicate at the internal host. It's very interesting case. And active backdoor is um, CNC server is just uh, has a configuration data and registry key like this one, and it's also the full feature backdoor. And it also has the HTTP-based communications. It's the same one when they attack the cryptocurrency agency. So they're using the same backdoor. They control the C2 server. And choose the interesting thing is to choose the HT head or get or post randomly and when they communication, when they communicate to C2 server. So, and passive backdoor does not have a C2 server. It just open the port and uh, listen the command from the attacker. And it's the installation process. It's an interesting thing is that they have a, uh, their own file naming features. So for example, they get the Windows service list and choose one randomly. For example, share the access and get display name of the service and append at the end of the service name as service, internet connection sharing service. And append the decrypted string at the service 
This is a decrypt service. It's an essential element of Windows service, blah, blah. And change service name as a small case, this one, and append the SVC, the share access SVC. And the drop the minus, drop the passive backdoor, same name, share access SVC dot DLL, and change the file timestamp. So it could be some kind of IOC, the indicator of compromise to your server. So. And this passive backdoor has a firewall punching function. They open, they allow the, open the file list at the Windows firewall and backdoor function is the same at the active backdoor. And the other two is the TCP connection harvester. Depending on the OS version, they're using, they're choosing the API name and add the whole inbound and outbound connection to the, this, this file. And, <coughs> And log wiper generate the random number and overwrite the whole file and data repeatedly for prevent the uh, forensic investigation and delete the file. And I found many tools from the around the world and you can see the, the, in the, the server, compromised server in Indonesia just has an active backdoor and India server has so many, many tools and, and Korea also has so many tools. It means that they, uh, implant many their tools depending on the situations. So, and the one case is uh, I found the active backdoor, and this backdoor is uh, found from the many countries: Colombia, Indonesia, Germany, India, South Korea, Sri Lanka. So they it means that they compromise the, the server randomly around the world. And the other thing is the I found uh, one pass, same passive backdoor found the Panama server and the Vietnam server, but it, at the Panama server, they installed the proxy and HTTP backdoor, but the uh, Vietnam server, they only have the TCP connection harvester. It means that they start to some information from the, uh, it, this is early stage and this, this server is uh, already installed the proxy server. It start to using that as uh, one of the proxy. And then what, what is the vulnerability to compromise these servers? And I extract the whole server information that they using the Windows Server 2003, very old one, and IS, IIS version is the 6.0, very old one. So they using the uh, CV 2017 7.269 vulnerability. I, fortunately, I found the one tools they using. They using the this vulnerability scanner and the scan the any server randomly. This uh, Exploit this vulnerability is published on March of last year, and after five days later, the POS code is unloaded to the Metasploit module, and after two weeks later, the attack tool is built, the larger system to attack, and the Microsoft is published after two months later. And let's put them together. The larger group is configured their city infrastructure as a CNC server infrastructure, and they're using the many kind of tools, active, passive, and proxy module, TCP harvester. And sometimes they infect the corporate host from the server, and they send some weaponized malicious HWP file or document, word document, and the victim, if the victim infected the manuscript, they start to communicate to one of the hope of a proxy server. This is a whole feature of the how they attack the uh, cryptocurrency exchange and another financial institute. And this is um, conclusion. They keep com trying to compromise the whole server around the world. So if you are cert or if you are security operator, never let your server to compromise this. So please update and take keep polishing their tools. So. They are very diligent guy, I think. And their favorite attack vector is spear phishing. So it's very important to educate the person. Please don't click the suspicious one. To, please don't open the such malicious file. And recently, they keep changing their TTPs. They start to adopt the PowerShell to their framework. So, so we have to head up of their TTPs. Keep head up. It's very important. I think the intelligence. Uh, it's not a scenario of the movie like a Cold War, Russia attacked the USA. It's not uh, important things. I think that this kind of a tactic, tool, and procedure, you know, so each other technical person is very important, I think. So that's the, my conclusion. And 
if you can contact me the Twitter or email address. So if you have any questions, you can contact me at any time. And if you have a questions, please raise your hand. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions? Yeah, we don't have much time left. <laughs> probably one or two questions. Uh, I'm not familiar with the Angle software, but is it is the PS going to execute automatically, or is, is there like a Microsoft that asks you, or there's a macro macro that you want to run it? Like, is it is it out? Is it just running the PS module inside? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't understand the right. So when from... when when the victim is opening uh, an uh, H HWP yes, file, yes. right? Does the PS file inside get executed automatically? Is yes, there a, is there a exactly. It's oh, a, wow. It's executed automatically. It's the one of the function feature of the Hangul file. Yeah. So it's not like Word where you, you basically, they ask you, oh, there is a marker, do you want yes, to Yes, they execute? doesn't ask anything. Oh, that's great. It's okay. executed automatically. <laughs> I'm not sure why, why that kind of feature is included. But. OK, um, another question. You can send a question by email. I was just wondering, uh, do you expect that the attacks that you are seeing focusing on uh, South Korea will change and be broader or they stop targeting you now that politically things are also evolving? Yes, I just uh, talk about uh, financial focus attack, but they just not attack uh, South Korea because another country has more money. So they keep attacking another many countries. And they are not just focused on the financial attack. And they recently they attacked some uh, political issue related intelligence. You know, the North Korea and South Korea summit and the North Korea USA summit. They're using the, that kind of contents and keep attacking to another country, especially South Korea. Okay, thank you very much. So, thank you.